Can we celebrate God's servant? Can we do that lavishly? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's celebrate Isaac. Marvelous, marvelous, marvelous work. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Our time is already gone. I'm just here to pray, just to, to add a little to what he has said and then speak over our lives. Um, we bless God for your commitment. We remain committed. Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. We are given a responsibility by God. It says, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. So we have a responsibility to ensure that the bread of the Spirit is always available here in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. I have just maybe less than 20, 25 minutes, so I think I'll just build on what he has said. Um, it is important for us to understand that the word of God comes to build our understanding. While I sat there just listening to him teach, my prayer was that God will really help us to see the relevance of the things that he was teaching about, helping us to be kings and helping us to be priests. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 5, where he got, I believe, his text from verse 10. We'll read 10 to 12. It says, we have been made unto our God kings and priests. And he says that we will reign in the earth. Go to verse 12. If it is true that we are kings and priests, there are seven spiritual realities that must find expression in our lives. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us, number one, power. Number two, riches. Number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven. Until these complete spiritual realities find expression in your life, something about your Christian experience will be missing. He touched on a few of them, but this is the concise list the Lamb received for us. Please keep that scripture again. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. He had to be slain to receive it. That was how far he went. To slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. So if it is true that you are a king and you are a priest, then we expect to watch all these things manifest in your life in reality. Now they will not manifest overnight. Like he did tell us, we will start activating our priesthood through the new birth experience and then the ministry of the spirit. Jesus would retreat away and spend time praying and 1 Corinthians chapter 2, when you read, Paul was teaching the church in Corinth and he brought a concept called the hidden wisdom of God. Is that true? He says, but we speak this among them that are mature, not the wisdom of this world, not of the princes of this world that tends to not. He calls it the hidden wisdom of God, which God made for our glory. Every time we begin to pray in the spirit, the Bible tells us that the spirit of God can search the mind of God and to reveal to us those things that have been freely given. We must grow to attain unto maturity in the spirit. Many of us, respectfully speaking, we've been around church for a long time, but we continue to wallow in gross spiritual ignorance. We just know the ritual of coming to church, knowing Jesus, when they pray, you say amen. But there is hardly any substantial spiritual intelligence. 
building on what he has shared i want to challenge you it's time to grow you must prophesy to yourself it is time to grow are we together it is time to grow and the bible lets us know it doesn't leave us in the dark when you are growing or when you grow there are certain things that must be captured in your life many expressions of it in scripture the first is luke chapter 2 and verse 52 the bible says jesus increased so growth must always come with increase increase in anything when anything remains at the same level in your life spiritually and otherwise there is no growth jesus increased in wisdom in stature and in favor with god and with men first corinthians 13 first corinthians 13 he says when i was a child when i was a child so it tells you uh, that should be verse um is that seven or eight now please look for it for me when i was a child i taught like a child i speak like a child look up please many of us we need to culture our speaking you can know whether a believer is attaining onto maturity or not because something begins to change in the way you speak when i listen to believers speak i know that many of them in fact the truth is that many of us by the way we speak we are not yet born again no if it's the power that raised christ from the dead that came upon you and nothing has changed you know we live in a world where it is marketable and fashionable to be vulgar to be careless and many of us as you're looking at me like this it is still a template that you believe you you are coming to church maybe you are even a worker and yet your speaking betrays you you ship anything from social uh, uh, social media ship anything from radio tv and you speak many of you it is your speech that has driven favor away from you when i was a child i spoke very pungent dishonoring discoordinated communication it makes it a risk to come close to you because of the way you speak is god speaking to us now if it is true that you are a king did you know that the bible says where the word of a king is there is power something for you to take home change your words change your speaking some of this ill speaking careless speaking anything that comes you just speak and you laugh and say that's how i am i'm expressing myself what then is the excellency of coming to the faith life kings have a way they speak before they allow you to see the queen of england or any king there usually is a system of helping you understand the do's and don'ts when you get to the palace you don't go and speak and say anything anyhow and say it doesn't matter it does matter so don't just claim royalty subscribe to the demands of royalty and one of it is culture you're speaking is god giving us something to take home if if in addition to what he's shared you carry this it is enough deliverance for the week many of us need to work on our speech our speaking the pungency the ill communication that comes out of your lips it's, it's not that which should come out of a Christian talk less royalty our environments have cultured us and you know that your speech comes out of your heart the abundance out of the abundance of the heart the mouth hallelujah so you must make up your mind don't just come and say oh isaac taught us today to be kings and priests and that's wonderful i am a king uh -uh, there must be evidences when i was a child your words are windows into your mindset windows into your thought life i can know the construct of your thinking by hearing you speak is that true and no great person will want to partner with someone if you don't have the discipline to culture your words why should i trust you to have the discipline to handle weightier things in the kingdom say after me in the name of jesus i receive grace to speak like royalty 
one more time say in the name of Jesus I receive grace to speak like royalty look up please speaking like royalty is not just jumping around and saying I am this I'm that no 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 more than that culture yourself to be able to speak intelligently the Bible says that your words be seasoned with salt that it may minister grace to the hearers if your words do not minister grace then you are not speaking like royalty some of you immediately after service even to greet you greet people as if as if it's a wicked spirit talking and you are supposed to be a child of God people avoid you because there is pungency that comes from your speech I'm trying to be as pragmatic as possible from this discussion so that we don't carry some um, some arbitrary thoughts with no point of application you must go home with something if it is true that you are royalty start with your words start with your speaking good morning sir how are you God bless you sir now you are speaking like royalty I beg, I beg, I open that door for me. You see how you are talking? You, you, you ask, listen, listen. You act like that and expect kings to talk to you? Change! Don't say I was born in my bag. Don't allow yesterday to frustrate your tomorrow. Repent and change right now. Are we together you must obtain grace to change right now stop listen 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 let me teach you something stop listening to some of these profitless profitless things that you engage your mind in some of you submit your mind your mind is immersed in largely godless thoughts from music to things you watch and then you expect that your speaking will not resonate with what you are following no there has to be constructive change in your life if it is true that you are royalty then it must affect your speaking i spoke as a child next verse please let me find somewhere to tie up i just came to speak over your life no the initial verse the initial chapter first corinthians chapter 13 from verse 11 now i think when I was a child, I speak like a child. Number two, I understood as a child. Number three, I taught as a child. But when I became mature, I became a man. I put what? What did the Bible call them? It didn't call them cultural things. It called them childish things. There are things you have to be willing to put aside seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses it says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and then to run with perseverance the race that is set before us for someone you came to church tonight and god is speaking to you it's time to lay aside childish things childish arguments childish discussions childish attitudes it's time to grow validate your your being in church by producing fruits that befit a christian hallelujah i don't want to inconvenience you but there are many other aspects i want to be your friend this night i just came late because if we are to dig into this issue of kings and priests let me touch a bit on it kings dress well kings dress well kings dress well don't just clap listen there is no madman who says i'm a madman the first way you know a madman is by his behavior and by his apparel many of us and I'm not a judgmental person. I'm, I'm, I'm quite a conservative person and, and quite liberal. But then let me tell you the truth. There are many of you, huh? both male and female. Don't even think I'm talking about ladies or both male and female. I've seen some of you, the way that you dress and then the things you are asking that I should pray for you for. I already know that it's not even just, even if it's released from heaven, your personal it would run away from you 
remember i told you that what you are looking for is also looking for you but not this version of you hold on please listen i love you i have a commitment to help you from today act like royalty iron your cloth don't say it is cheapest no no don't dress and look like a thief dress and look like an irresponsible person just because you are coming to the house of god no discipline yourself be careful the things you ship from around the world you are a child of god are we together dress well look at yourself ask wise people to look at you that's right no 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 these are the implications of being royalty and don't you say i should not talk to you about it my son he says pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from your heart he says they are life to those who find them some of you this is what you need to change in your life even if god gives you one million you will spend it on riotous living and you will not invest in the things that are consistent with royalty the shoe might be cheap polish it if you are leaving your hair comb it look nice look smart don't look like somebody who is not going anywhere and don't say it does not matter are we together the liberty god has given us is not for licentiousness we must obtain grace to be responsible people grace to be responsible people and then let me tell you this there is no king that sits on a throne who is dull in fact most kings justify their royalty through the excellency of their understanding that means if it is true that you are royalty it's time to re-edit your thinking your concept and be rich unto god full of spiritual understanding hallelujah that you know what to do if it is true that you are royalty and you have been in church for a while you should not be at a loss as to what to do about the matters of life whether it's in your own life or that of others someone comes to you as a believer who has been around for a while i'm trusting god for financial increase you don't know what to tell the person i'm trusting god to be free from demons you say go and listen to a message that is wonderful but when you who has listened to it why don't you understand it and now be an interpreter of that thing everybody says spiritual understanding yes sir at this point in your life it may not be fair to say you you should know everything but at least if you don't know something about prayer you should know something about giving you should know something about relationships you should know something about the dynamics of manifesting spiritual realities you cannot be a blessing in ignorance when they came to solomon they came to the king watch what happened two women one they slept on one another and then their children died and one exchange you know and they came to solomon it was a big issue it was the first test of his being a king the wisdom that he had access from god here's what he said he said bring me the sword that sword is the word of god the moment the word of god came in because it is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart can i tell you if you really want a life of beauty and color please settle down with the word of god and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture and the bible says that it is able to make you wise unto salvation meditate on these things he says give yourself wholly to them that your profiting may appear unto all man of god it is time to justify the spiritual investments of god in your life by being someone with sufficient spiritual intelligence no member will come and sit down and keep listening to you when you are not rich in the knowledge of scripture can i tell you people love you but they love their destinies too and no one will come and sit down and submit to you just wasting time shadow boxing not having sufficient spiritual intelligence I have taught you this to the degree to which you are valuable all men will seek for you 
if it is true that you are a king and you're a priest then you must defend that title and that position by high level spiritual insight high level spiritual insight that when you open your mouth to speak you are speaking solutions to people's problems when they come to you they know that they will find the wisdom of god i made up my mind that in the name of jesus i will continue to grow grow in power grow in wisdom all of these seven dimensions that revelation chapter 5 and verse 12 captures this will be the the basis for our prayers tonight you're going to look at this scripture carefully and find out which part of it is not at work in my life for some of you power is zero even demons know it power is zero the sons of skiva for instance you can have zero power no spiritual power whatsoever spiritual power is generated from the place of prayer spiritual power is generated from the place of illumination and understanding power have you received power have you received riches isaac was sharing here some of you have deliberately rejected poverty i mean deliberately rejected the blessing of the lord based on the guise of either a false teaching by well-intentioned people or just carelessness not working in keeping with the principles that guarantee the blessing of the Lord it's time to receive riches and then to receive wisdom and then to receive strength this strength here talks of capacity the staying power the ability to confront the vicissitudes of life without being beaten by them it says if you turn aside in the day of battle your strength can I tell you, the world that we live in today will require men of stamina. That you will refuse to bend. People can insult you, but you stand true. Most of us do not have that strength and that stamina to endure until your blessings manifest. You need strength. Please keep it there. Strength. And then honor. Ah, I've taught you on honor. I told you you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is conferred upon you by another what is honor honor means being rewarded to match your true worth the perception and the reward that matches your true word your true worth dishonor is the trivializing downplaying demeaning of your value and what you represent can I tell you this you have to receive that grace for honor there is such a grace for honor and glory 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 here talks of the excellence that comes with results he said oh lord our god how excellent from the word excel to excel means to surpass ordinary standards and blessing you know by now what blessing is blessing is more than just um having material things mm -mm. material things only come to honor the fact that you are carrying the blessing the blessing works like a magnet is a dimension of the operation of the holy spirit upon your life that attracts people attracts opportunities and attracts resources miraculously when you carry the blessing everything needed for life and godliness will gravitate towards you inevitably has someone learned something today listen God sees my heart my dear people how that I desire to see us believers walk in superior levels of excellence and results this is what God desires do you know the joy that will be in my heart to hear that someone comes to stand and testify here and say that I had, I had a neighbor and I was sick and the neighbor told me that I'm a member of Koinonia. Apostle may not be here, but Jesus is here and I have been taught. Let me pray for you. It says they shall lay hands on the sick. I've taught you that the days of super South Christianity is over. It's not all about the man of God. The man of God is a vessel to train others. Good leaders don't maintain followers. They turn followers to leaders and then leaders to agents of transformation my greatest pride is not being a superstar apostle did this no that the truths you have heard you take them and you go and do wonders with them to the glory of the name of Jesus 
it is very very painful for a leader when you invest your time and your energy and there is no growth all wise when I see people rising loving Jesus primarily because in order of priority my first and most important commitment to you is your spiritual growth and development nothing will ever replace that every other thing I teach is as an attachment to this foundation no matter what else I teach you forever for as long as you are part of this vision you can be sure that in order of priority your spiritual growth and development remains my primary assignment your knowing God your understanding his ways your growth in prayer according to Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the Bible says they continued in the Apostles doctrine and fellowship breaking of bread and in prayer Acts chapter 6 and verse 4 the Apostle says but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 it says that we grow in three dimensions number one the knowledge of his will number two wisdom number three spiritual understanding acts chapter 20 and verse 32 it says and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified so you will continue to learn the dynamics of prayer you will continue to understand the word of God. We will keep building you as far as knowing God is concerned. John 17 and verse 3. It says, this is eternal life that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. This is eternal life that they may know you. But in addition to all of these things, can I tell you, the Bible says, according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life, help me. That means I will not be negligent to also teach you these other aspects of the kingdom. That these seven realities, please keep it there. This, these are the things that redemption brought for us. Revelations 5 and 12. I will not emphasize one area the first thing I will teach you is not the seven things. I will teach you about that lamb who was slain. That is the first person you need to know. You don't just know about what the lamb gave you. You need to know the lamb that was slain. In fact, you need to know that he's a lamb. Then you need to know that he was slain. Then you need to know what he has received for you. If all you know is what the lamb has received from you, your knowledge is not balanced. Worthy is the lamb that was slain was slain I will keep learning myself as a man of God because we remain students in the school of the Spirit Paul at the apex of his apostolic ministry said that I may know him and the power I may know him this is how you know people who are passionate about God they desire to know him but let me tell you this beloved people of God please be angry at your current level hate ignorance fight it fight it I cannot continue to live my life this way there is something I do not know for some of you your knowledge should start with an encounter an encounter with the God of the Bible then you learn the principles principles are useless until encounters are in place you have to know this encounters must precede principles you encounter a person then you learn the principles that now help you to relate with that kingdom and that system we're going to pray we have been made unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign upon the earth I don't want you to fear death I don't want you to fear the sound of destruction because there is something that you know the Bible says look up please it says um, how, how, how does it put it now it says um, all things work together to them that love the Lord and to them who are the called it talks of loving the Lord and number two those who are the called it takes knowledge 
it takes knowledge and heir as long as he's a child he differed not from a slave even though he be lord of all i am challenging you that your priesthood and your royalty depends on knowledge the bible says we are a chosen generation he calls us a royal priesthood a peculiar people the bible says that who have been called out of darkness to show for the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light the word praises there is the word doxazo a display of the glory and the royalty of the king that was what the king asked Vashti to come and do that she refused he said come and display my royalty let them know that I am king over 127 provinces and she refused for refusing to sing his praises for refusing to display his excellence she left the palace it is my prayer for everyone here that no one will take your bishopric because you see let me tell you this when your life perpetually does not produce fruit that brings glory to the name of the Lord he will prune you for a while but after a while I assure you he may not throw you away but you will carry your mandate and give another it is it is consistent in scripture God will not indefinitely forbear with your lack of results mm -mm. he will love you but your bishopric he will give another that is why you see there are people who start their mandate with God not capturing certain assignments but later on in their lives and ministries you will see some things added to them it was taken from unfaithful people and given to faithful people the parable of the talents they took the talent from the one man who did they give it to the one he gave him five initially now he has 11. may god not replace you in the name of jesus christ Bible says let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father which is in heaven John 15 and verse 8 herein is our father glorified when we bear much fruit he says so shall we be your disciples verse 16 it says you have not chosen me 15 16 John but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain God is counting on us and tonight we have learned that we are kings and we are priests it's time for us to stay true go and listen to this message again stay true to your priesthood the first part of call as far as being a priest is concerned is your salvation it is true Jesus said I am the way that way leads you to the truth and that truth administers life I am the way the truth and the life then he says no man cometh to the father except by me then when you get saved like he was teaching you John chapter 3 now you go to verse 5 and he will tell you verily verily I say unto you except ye be born of water and of the spirit you cannot enter into that experience of the kingdom you must be born of water and the spirit water there talks of the ministry of the word the spirit there talks of the ministry of the Holy Spirit have you learned something tonight I want to speak over your life but we are going to pray for the next two or three minutes you're going to cry to the God of heaven and tell him Lord I desire to manifest my priesthood I desire to manifest royalty indeed I desire to manifest my priesthood for many of us our prayer lives have gone down many of us are not spiritual remember what I taught you there is no spirituality in our lives we still act carnal we still act natural in fact it says the natural man does not receive anything from God nor can he understand them because the carnal man because they are spiritually discerned many of us need to come out of carnality to be driven sensually that there is no advantage you are not tapping into the resources of the spirit to live an excelling life don't be neither here nor there you have to be determined that I want to walk with God 
so you are going to pray lord i am ready to be a priest and a king culture my words culture my lifestyle culture my understanding my appreciation for spiritual things open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray are you praying you are crying to the god of heaven by the spirit of grace i desire a rich spiritual life i am first a priest unto god a priest unto god offering up sacrifices lord grant me grace to perform my priestly duties the duties of prayer the duties of intercession the duties of the secret place the duties of the altar i receive that grace go ahead and pray whether you are a businessman whether you are a minister of the gospel whether you are a career person a family person regardless the geography of your assignment you are first a priest hallelujah please look up there is a structure in scripture that makes for excelling in this realm it's a tripartite structure number one king number two priest number three prophet it is a tripartite formation all through scripture when you see it the synergy of the kingly dimension the priestly dimension and the prophetic dimension kings in ancient times they reigned and they did well to the degree to which they were connected to priesthood in fact it was the priests who in many cases doubled as the prophets who ordained the kings and the kings will have to still tap into the resources of the spirit as it came from the priests and the prophets don't lose that formation now by the spirit of god you've been given the advantage of that that duality you are a priest by the ministry of the holy spirit you can connect to the realm of the spirit tap into the rich resources of heaven the bible says that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ and it takes the Holy Spirit searching the mind of God to reveal those things to you. Eye has not seen, the Bible says. Ear has not heard, neither has it entered the heart of any man what God has in store for them that love him. It says, but he has revealed it unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Priesthood. It's time to fan back your prayer altar and pray with intelligence and pray with understanding. Don't just pray as a superstitious Christian. Pray as one who has regard and respect for the word. I have taught you this. Go and listen to the teachings. There are many other teachings along this line coming. The prayer ministry must be major in your life. You can pray amiss, Apostle James taught us but you can pray with precision the bible says this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything according to his will he heareth us and if it is true that he hears us then we receive our petitions granted priesthood the ministry of prayer the ministry of the word granting you high level spiritual illumination you cannot become a priest in ignorance jesus himself knew what to do you have to know what to do on the matters that surround your life first from a spiritual standpoint then wisdom and all the dimensions that help you manifest your royalty you need wisdom hallelujah i am pounding on this issue of your spiritual life many believers pray many pray as a ritual because we're in a generation where there is a heightened appreciation of the ministry of prayer whether we are praying and miss or praying with accuracy at least we pray and that is commendable hoping that god will fine tune our approach to prayer but when it has to do with spiritual intelligence light accurate spiritual illumination being granted access to understanding many believers are grossly deficient the body of christ is grossly deficient we have lots of spiritual statements greek and hebrew matters that we communicate but they are not methodically arranged to give us victory 
I know something about ministry. I know something about prayer. I know something about angels. I know something about Greek and Hebrew words. The Bible says, let him that thinks he knoweth anything, know that he does not know anything as he ought to know. So we must cry like Colossians 3.16 admonishes us to let the word of Christ dwell in us in all richness and in all wisdom. It says, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. The mountain of the Lord's house, according to the prophecy that was given Micah, it will be a house where knowledge will proceed. It says they will say, come, let us go to the house of the Lord, the mountain of Jacob, at the house of the Lord, and he will teach us his ways. He will teach us his ways. He will teach us his ways. Genesis 33, Exodus 33, and verse 13, Moses was crying unto God and he says, show me now thy way show me your way i want to understand your precepts then verse 18 five verses later he now says show me your glory you cannot have his glory until you understand his ways are you ready to pray lord i am ready in this season to be to open up my spirit for high level spiritual illumination i am tired of ignorance i am tired of shadow boxing not having spiritual intelligence someone pray open your mouth and pray the intelligence to be able to navigate my way around life and command the victory that befits royalty show me oh god open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things from out of your law someone is praying those following online make sure you pray we are asking the lord to grant us illumination by the spirit illumination by the spirit illumination by the spirit someone is praying it says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course but i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high it says you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes hallelujah the last prayer point i'm going to give you and then we'll wrap up for today please look up the Bible spoke about a strange man in the Bible called Uzziah who became a very prosperous and a mighty man and the secret behind his might was that Uzziah set himself to seek the Lord he says and for as long as he sought the Lord the Lord made him to prosper there is a relationship between seeking the Lord seeking the Lord is proof of humility is proof that you are incapacitated and you do not know enough To seek the Lord. The psalmist said, as the deer pants after the water brooks, so my soul. Many of us, your, your passion for God is going down. God is showing you in dreams. God has used the prophetic to show you. God has used experiences to show you. Something is going wrong with your spiritual life. Don't wait until it goes down to the point where you become a victim of any assault of darkness. Last prayer point fan my passion for you fan my passion for the house of god fan my passion for spiritual things someone lift your voice and cry to god it is not compulsory but if you are serious with god cry to god from the depth of your heart fan the embers of my spiritual life fan it back to flames take away laxity and unseriousness from my life it says return to me and I will return to you. Is someone praying? Fan my passion for you. Fan my passion for your house. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. That the house of the Lord would not be something you drag yourself to. And when you go and sit down, you're just waiting for service to end. So you go back. It's with delight. The psalmist said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in your house.
Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you this. When your passion for the house of God goes down, I assure you that the platform for your growth has also been destroyed. It says, when I came into the sanctuary, then understood I. The house of God is a place of understanding. Hallelujah. When the devil wants to destroy you, he will make it look like a burden to come to the house of God. I am very touched and humbled when I hear that people from as early as 8, 9, 10 are already here and they sit patiently till the service, praying, studying, their Bibles are not being distracted. Let me encourage you, God is no man's debtor. This God you see, he will visit you in a way that it will be evident to all. Are you learning? I just returned from a trip and then came here and I could see my people, they were just looking at me and I'm sure that if they had their ways, they would just say, Apostle, you stretch yourself, please sleep. But even the devil knows that for as long as I am breathing, now, and it is not because God has made me head over this vision by the privilege of God's grace it is my passion for the house of God if you do not have passion for the house of God I am telling you it's an attack you are either backsliding or it's an attack or both you, you fight it passion for the house of God because you will get more than money there in the house of God you will find strength they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion have you been edified tonight so please go back and kill that laxity take responsibility over your spiritual life Please understand that every time you appear before God, you are not doing God a favor. You are not doing a man of God a favor. I tell you sincerely, uh -uh, it is for your own benefit. Bishop David Oedipo would tell us that everything command God gives man, it is entirely for his own benefit, not for God's benefit. Make up your mind, the house of God. Make up your mind to engage the word of God. Learn, sit down, be a student of scripture. Let your knowledge not just be Sunday after Sunday. You can go to the, the, uh, the YouTube page and there are so many teachings. Camp with them. You hear the testimonies of people here. They will tell you, I sat with this message. Some of you, if we give you a recommendation of teachings, listen to this, add this to it. Like a doctor's prescription, you usually would go because we live in a generation where we want instant, sharp, sharp. Anything that is lasting is subject to the law of time. God wants you to be built. He doesn't want to throw you up so that you come back in shame. He wants to build you like an edifice. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare every spirit fighting your spiritual growth fighting your passion for the house of god fast, uh, fighting anything god in your life i command it to give way finally this night i command it to give way finally this night i command it to give way finally this night hear me and any association around your life that makes god look like a burden and a luggage either because of westernization or because some kind of deception of hell i separate you from those associations some of you the moment you lie down to pray is the heat of the sun that wakes you you don't have the sensitivity to wake up even when the holy spirit is beckoning on you wake up it doesn't have to be that there is until there is danger waking up to pray is part of your spiritual growth routine you must discipline yourself prayer is not about being passionate you don't bath because you are always happy to do it you don't eat just there are times you don't even want to eat but you have to eat for your health he spake a parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint please kill that laxity don't say apostle spoke over my life the demon will run away build stature build power in the secret place there are many of us easy things are still hard because you are still a child shake off certain limitations some spirits should not be disturbing you again 
because of the excellency of the fire that emanates from your life the same strategy satan used in your life two years ago and defeated you hands down he's still coming with it again and you've not grown enough to detect it Abba! the spirit of understanding understanding of scripture and understanding of the ways of god in the name of jesus may it rest upon you now high level spiritual understanding i impart that grace upon you now in the name of jesus i decree and declare the grace to fight ignorance ignorance of the ways of god ignorance of the mysteries of the kingdom i declare that grace released upon you now the grace that will allow the word of god transform you transform your speaking transform your lifestyle transform your appearance transform everything about your life may that grace rest upon you now and hear me everywhere you have been living a defeated life kings are known for excellence there is an aura of victory always around them there are kings who slay themselves when they find out that their kingdom their treasures everything has been taken they literally kill themselves because they feel there is nothing there again can i tell you this for any one of you who does not have the evidences around your life that should validate that you are a priest and a king in the name of jesus i declare over you may the lord supply those evidences lavishly shame and reproach i drive it far from your life 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 in the name of jesus let the spirit of power rest upon you let the spirit of wisdom rest upon you let the spirit of might rest upon you let honor rest upon you let the grace for favor rest upon you the grace that attracts resources let it let it rest upon you in the name of jesus christ I'm saying it from the depth of my spirit may this grace that makes for honor let it rest upon you may this grace that makes for favor let it rest upon you you are a distinguished people and when you step out everybody will know that you are Beulah and Hephzibah like that garden that the Lord has blessed let there be results to your christian experience i forbid a frustrated christian life i'm not ashamed to bless you always if you need a car i release it in your life if you need a house i release it in your life if you need a job i release it to your life in addition to your spiritual growth i prophesy upon your life everything that will make you comfortable to serve the lord i stand upon this altar i declare may that grace rest upon you in the name of jesus christ and for those of you here who are in ministry and you're not getting the kind of results you should get in the name of jesus from this night barrenness in ministry comes to an end you have tried to open a door for a long time and that door has refused to open i break that door now help them please i break that door now listen a door is a system for access it midwives one room and another it midwives one dimension and another when that system for access is closed you can weary yourself at the door i'm praying again every door that has refused to allow you go forward i stand by the god of heaven let that door be broken now 
believe it, I'm placing something on your life. May that door be broken now. Hear me? And for those of you who God gave opportunities and you misuse the opportunities, is there hope for a tree? I want to tell you that you are in a kingdom where God can restore. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus, everything that left your life, either through carelessness or demonic attack or lack of discernment or abuse and misuse by the prophetic, I call it forth to your life now. I call it back to your life now. Every troublemaker in your life, not allowing you sleep, not allowing you rise, who goes to your destiny helpers before you arrive there, manipulating them to reject you in the name of Jesus. I cut you away from them. And everybody who asks you, where is the evidence of your being a Christian this week? May my God start answering them. Not next week, this week. May my God start answering them. Oh, may the mighty God arise for you. Arise for your children. Arise for your family. Let me pray for those in government, leaders and politicians in this house. I'm not ashamed to pray for you. I will pray for you in the name of Jesus. May my God distinguish you. I place an anointing upon you. May God distinguish you in a way that will surprise you. Captains of industry, may my God distinguish you. Businessmen, may God distinguish you. Career people, may God distinguish you. You will become strange men and women of influence. Whatever makes resources run away from you, I stand by the power of the prophetic and I declare over your life, anywhere your resources are, across the globe, not just in Nigeria, the wisdom, the favor, and the stamina to attract those resources, I decree and declare, receive the grace for it now. Everybody who came here from outside this state or from outside this nation, I stretch my hands to you in the name of Jesus. May the God of sudden visitations, the one who can give you a consolation for your sacrifice, may he visit you tonight, 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 not tomorrow. Help that lady tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You hear me? I pray for our online family, all those connecting from diaspora, the thousands of people and potentially millions, whether you are watching by way of a rebroadcast, you are following live by television or by internet, I speak over your life. Receive it by faith wherever you are. May the Lord turn your life around. May the Lord change your story. May you know him more. May your Christian experience carry results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Final prayer. The kind of anointing that must rest on you and cause everything around you to blossom. It says, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. And then the wilderness shall be counted for a fruitful vine and a fruitful vine for a forest. May that anointing rest upon you now. Grace for signs and wonders supernatural manifestations exploits by the spirit creation will answer to you everything will answer to you help that lady animate and inanimate things in the name of jesus can i tell you this listen i don't stand to brag before you 
but I assure you by God there is nothing I call that does not come I stand by this grace and I declare everything you have called and has refused to come I push it by prophecy it must obey your call opportunity dimensions resources receive it in the name of Jesus wave your hands to Jesus give him praise father we honor you and we thank you wave your hands to Jesus from side to side let him know that you have received thank you Jesus the Bible says with prayer with thanksgiving with thanksgiving thank you Jesus you will return into a realm of strange testimonies some of you may not know what has come on your life no you didn't come to church with what is on you now i assure you by god no matter how anointed you are i am telling you what is on you now you didn't come to church with it you are carrying back something upon your life that you did not come to church with in the name of jesus please put your hands down thank you very much you can give him a big big hand clap he's worthy of it hallelujah our first and primary assignment as the church of the lord jesus christ is to reveal jesus and to lead his people to the cross please keep standing we're wrapping up already let's minimize movement we don't spend up to two three minutes after this call so let's minimize just running around i know some of us for justifiable reasons we may need to move but as much as possible let it be a discipline that you hold yourself it's not if you've been here for a while it doesn't take more than two three minutes and we're done hallelujah please it's part of the disciplines of spiritual maturity except you have to but there are many people who have come here tonight whilst listening to um the previous session and then the admonishments that i brought here and the prophetic declarations the Holy Spirit began to speak to you telling you that you need Jesus and you need to take serious your spiritual life now it is not compulsory nobody can force you but I beseech you by the message of God let tonight not pass you by as far as making this eternal decision to make Jesus Lord of your life there are two categories in one I will call you quickly those who are handing their lives over to Jesus genuinely for the first time and then those who are saying apostle i remember making this decision but i need a rededication as it is right now i'm not happy with my christian life my life has gone haywire i've gone into all kinds of things and i need a rededication whether you are outside you're in any of the overflows you are inside here i'm going to count one to five please wherever you are there is no distance that is too far as far as receiving Jesus is concerned let's celebrate them as they begin to come one I'm counting rush to Jesus don't sit back and assume that you are fine when you know the Holy Spirit is calling you come 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 to Jesus come to Jesus he can give you a new beginning I assure you thank you Thank you. Koinonia, celebrate them. Let's encourage them as they come. It takes boldness to answer this decision. To answer this call. Let them come. I still believe there are a few more people. Come. We have a minute for you. Come to Jesus. Apostle, it's my first time here. Am I invited? You're most welcome. Come. Come to Jesus. Apostle, I've been here every service. And I've watched people come out. But today he's convicting me. Is it too late? No. Come. It is never too late with Jesus. Come. I desire to come, but I don't know if I'm serious with God or not. You can come and have the assurance of salvation right now. Young and old, male, female, you're welcome. Hallelujah. And for those of you who are watching, you're saying, Apostle, can I be part of this? Absolutely. Right in your homes, your churches, wherever you are viewing from, he's giving you an opportunity right now to step into a functional relationship with Jesus, the Son of God. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him, that he should not perish, 
but have life everlasting he did not spare his son for your sake now you respond in gratitude come I salute all of you who are here all those who are in front of your LED screens and those following from home listen this is a noble decision I don't want you to stand here feeling bad stand here feeling ashamed you are before Jesus the son of the living God it's like being called to come and receive an award only that this surpasses every award you've got or you will ever get in your life this matters to your life now and even to your life hereafter thank you for making this decision let me request that you raise your right hand as a sign of surrender to the God of heaven go ahead say this after me let it be loud and clear you are not reciting a poem i'm only guiding you jesus is here to administer that life say lord jesus one more time say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word and i declare that i need you right now i ask you to forgive my sins i ask you to cleanse me from all unrighteousness I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I declare that Jesus is my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I declare that from today, I am a child of God. A recipient of eternal life I go forward ever and backward never amen and amen keep your hands lifted father we thank you thank you for these precious ones young and old alike you have brought them at the foot of the cross they have made these declarations and by the authority of scripture I declare your sins forgiven in the name of Jesus I declare that God is giving you a new beginning let the power of sin satan hell and the grave be broken over your life now i commend you to god and even to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified i commend you also to the ministry of the spirit that you be grounded and established in righteousness in the name of jesus you will go from glory to glory you will go from grace to grace for whatever and backward never in Jesus name I pray let's celebrate them thank you very much now please may I request just for a minute or two that all of you in front here just move to my right which will be your left there are counselors waving their hands smiling at you please just move to my right and they'll have a word or two with you just get your information and you'll be back to your seat let's celebrate them let's celebrate them hallelujah praise the name of the lord now just a very quick announcement our technical and sound department those who are responsible for our sound and light they are opening the doors for new members there are many of you here in the house of god who have been praying for an opportunity to serve but they are particularly looking for skilled people those who are skilled in uh, sound light and and all the related areas please if you are interested you want to serve the lord in that capacity i want you to walk to the pr desk just outside here and you register your name and they'll guide you on what else to do have you been blessed tonight please rise up on your feet thank you very much we have a dear friend and brother pastor fred zamani house on the rock zamfara god bless you thank you so much hallelujah praise the lord and um now we also have the wife of the Olu of Wari. God bless you, Your Excellency. Thank you so much. Thank you. And blessings to everyone. May the Lord increase you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please remain prayerful and remain very serious with God. You can connect to Koinonia Global all through the week. You'll get reviews of all of these messages and our social media platforms, by the way. Everyone who is part of this vision should be actively involved in the social media platforms for your for your spiritual edification make sure that you connect to it send it to your loved ones this is not marketing a ministry this is marketing and information that is important for your life and destiny this week is a blessed one for you even as the lord has declared over you you will return with testimonies go from glory to glory and grace to grace 
in the name of Jesus. After the grace, do well to greet one or two people, hug them and tell them you're a king and you're a priest. Hallelujah. Do remember to bring us many next week. Um, in as much as God is helping us, and I know that we've exhausted this facility inside and outside, but we still have a responsibility for in-gathering. So make sure that every week you invite as many. There are still so many people around this city and this nation who are in need of the power of God and his grace. Do not rob them of an opportunity to experience Jesus. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Father, thank you. Let us go in peace and return with joy. In Jesus' name I pray. The grace in fellowship, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, all the days of our lives, as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you and see you on Sunday. Every clock!